Oh, Hamish! What? Hamish, help! Well, I'm, oh, God. I'm too far away, man. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm a healer. I shouldn't even be attacking. Adam, you're too far away. <laughs> yes, you're torn! Uh, let me just find it. Um, sorry, hang on. OK, I got it. Ah! Oi, dickhead! Come and, come and, come and fight someone your own size, you, you dickhead! What did you say? I said... You have a dick for a head, you dickhead! Come find me, you dick! Ah! Oi, dickhead! Oi, I said... I said you got a dick for a head. Wow. Ah! Oh, dig it! Your mama. I said, your mama did a poo poo right out of her bum. It was disgusting. You take that back! No, I can't. I wish your mum could take that poop poo and put it right back up that stinky butt part. Cause that was the stinkiest poo poo I did ever smell. You stop that! Right now! Everyone agrees with me. Everyone knows about your mama's stinky poo poo. Everywhere around the town. Everyone knows your mum's reputation as the stinkiest poo poo girl it ever did exist with a poo poo bum. Right! That's it! Ah! I did it! I told him! Ah! No, no. Ah! Uh, my sciatica! These biscuits! <laughs> Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, guys. Today I am going to make a new video, so please subscribe, 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 whatever. Please subscribe. I want to reach one million likes, so please subscribe, 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 guys. Okay, thank you. I what the hell? Stop saying that. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Stop! What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what is quack a everyone? It is the OCG coming to you from the place to be. Their nursing home. Where your mom is doing doing a very stinky poo poo from her butt butt. Uh, that was Viva Viva La Dirtly, by the way. I love them. They have a great uh, they have two great series. It's uh, um, <clears throat> bored and uh, and uh, bored and epic uh, epic NPC men. So. Anyways, I just, just like I stated on the, <clears throat> just like it states in the title, this is uh, going to talk about my job, my health, and uh, the channel for 2021. Now, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have like the, uh, the greatest job in the world with the most responsibility, and I don't have uh, a lot of subs. Um, I mean, I have 550 subs, but what, I, I maybe have 10 that watch videos. I think that's what the usual thing is, but, um, and most people won't listen to the half of what's going on, uh, what I'm talking about here. So, uh, first thing, my job, my job, uh, is right now, last year was a lot of support for pandemics and, uh, 
trying to prevent certain things from happening uh, in case they were going to happen and then trying to uh, basically put up what it's uh, what's called uh, well what's called a uh, a talk or something like that like a technical operations center that was last year i thought things were done but unfortunately uh, a lesson to learn here is um the lessons to learn here are one good and no good deed goes unpunished so uh i i, I went up i went pat i went uh I went all the way across the state uh, last week. Uh, worked 18-hour days Saturday and Sunday uh, when I should have been playing Hitman 3, which I really want to play. So I was playing that, and or I was doing that. Uh, hit an animal. I don't know what animal it was. I tried to see if I could find it. I couldn't. Um, I hope it did live. Those things kind of hurt me, you know, I, the empathy. Uh, that I worry about hitting an animal and that it suffers for hours or a day or uh, before it passes away. I, I don't. I would never want to wish that on any living being. Uh, second thing is, uh, uh, I also got a, a traffic ticket uh, going up there. So wonderful. So I will have to wait to get reimbursed for mileage and gas and my hotel room, uh, but uh, I'll have to pay up front like thousand. <laughs> probably about eighteen hundred dollars on a ticket and a and a new bumper yeah, so no good deed goes unpunished uh, so there's these things uh, there's ten things you can do and uh, this is life advice for you if you want to do something well there's ten things you can do that requires zero percent talent that's it but it'll give you a hundred respect hundred percent respect and I'll go through them real quick that I can remember I don't think I'm gonna remember all ten things so let's go with it the first thing is be on time. And why I say I'd be on time, if you're going to be somewhere at 6 a.m., which is what I was doing uh, with these COVID vaccination centers. By the way, that's what I'm doing now. I am, uh, what is it? It's called um, New York State Crisis Agency Crisis something or other. I don't know. And it's an emergency. It, EOC is the acronym. and I, I Something command. And so I am ITS support, which means network, uh, laptops, uh, applications on said laptops, databases for individuals getting the vaccination, appointment listing, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that goes through from a, a database, a website, uh, into a server, any, et cetera, et cetera, over networks is what I'm doing. Uh, the What I did... Uh, after Potsdam, I was working in Albany, in a co and we're doing these in colleges in New York State. By the way, New York State is, uh, I would say, is the fifth largest government in the whole world. So the United States is the, is the you have the big federal government, but our state governments are also huge. And they're bigger than most countries. So New York State's up there. Uh, so that's a lot of infrastructure and a lot of technology to have to actually uh, deal with. Um, now, I also have to deal with lazy uh, bureaucrats uh, that take credit for other things. Uh, but, uh, which is the more frustrating part of my job, is when I want to do something right, when I want to make sure everything's great, uh, and other people just want to save their ass and do things the most laziest thing possible. That's America. This is America. Uh, uh, this is America. That's what that's what uh, Charles Gambino should have sang. Anyway, so uh, this part, my part of my stuff this week was like a heavy snowfall. Snowfall was moving basically access points, uh, routers, and repeaters uh, away from <laughs> away from areas that a networking team in New York State get this the team are part of networking and yet they were putting them in front of generators they were putting them on like uh they were putting these access points on uh ground level here's a tip for everybody if you don't know this it your router should go in the highest possible area of your house so if you have an attic it would be most beneficial to put your router upside down with the antennas pointing out and 
on the roof, uh, uh, like on the inverted roof of your attic or on the floor of the attic if need be. But pointing down and upside down would be the great thing. If you look at like a Nighthawk, uh, if you look at a Nighthawk uh, a router, and you can see where they got the three antenna pointing out. Anyways, uh, before I digress too further, but it should be centered of the house, highest area possible. Yet when I say centered, move it 30 feet uh, away from the kitchen because the kitchen is the biggest interference of uh, Wi-Fi signal, right? So anyway, so that's, that's what, um, that's what you do. And you put it at the highest area because what, what broadcast, uh, what the SSID broadcast 2.4 and 5 gigahertz does is it goes, it, it travels down and it spreads like a fan. So you don't want your router, like your 55 inch TV, where you stream YouTube and you stream Netflix. You don't want that directly under your router because again, it spreads thin you know, other things that could be under your router, like your cell phone, that doesn't matter much. But what heavy bandwidth type of things, you kind of want it at an angle away from your router. Okay, so anyway, so that's 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 that kind of trick. Uh, for us, for us YouTubers, uh, you want a hard line. And I basically have a long pole, and I, ba uh, I put my modem and my router in the attic, and then I use this long pole to push my, what do I got? I think I got cat, I think I got cat six or seven. No, is there a cat seven yet? I don't know, but I got cat six gold plated. Uh, I got some really good ethernet cable. So what I do is I basically have the router upstairs. Uh, I also have like, uh, I guess my photo album. Uh, I do have like old time photo albums cause I'm old. But the New Age photo album is basically taking all the personal photos of family, friends, and me going out, uh, or or nature uh, kind of cameras, or uh, you know, uh, you know, all the all the pictures that uh, uh, my lady friends give me uh, here at the nursing home. You know, Gladys, uh, Gladys uh, showing me like uh, uh, her denture collection. Anyways, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's it's crude. Anyway, so it's, uh, I got, I have that, uh, and I have like an external hard drive that I hook up to my router upstairs. So, and that's my photo album. And it's also like the backup of my PCs and such. Anyways, so what I do is I put the ethernet cable and I, I use this long pole and I shove it down uh, in my walls. And so, and then I put uh, basically network jacks. So I got, uh, on every floor I have, I have one network jack. Uh, me and sometimes two so on my first floor i have a network jack in my dining room but then i can all but then i also have it like on the inverse side which is in my bedroom um so you know it's it but it's the same thing it's like they're both on the same level and then it goes down to my basement where it's uh it's my where i record i do have like a green screen wall that i'm getting set up and it's also where, uh, you know, my musical instruments are. So uh, not that I could play really well, but I do have a bass. And here's a little uh, trivia on me. I have a bass that I play right-handed. But yet when I play guitar, I play guitar left-handed. I have no idea. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, but I play drums uh, right-handed as well. Um... At, but I'm and I'm better at piano slash keyboards. I'm better at that. My left hand is a little better at the at keyboards. Um, with my left hand, so I don't know what happened. I think I was left-handed, and I think there was just kind of something when you were uh, in something when I was a kid where they just essentially it didn't matter, so they switched it to right-handed because it was easier on the teacher or something. So I think I'm one of those lefties that got told to use my right hand. Or maybe it's just like everybody I knew had was using her right hand, and I emulated them. So I'm not ambidextrous. I'm actually very clumsy. So I guess I'm clumsy in both hands. Uh, so anyway, so my work is is essentially that. So like moving access points when it's like 
uh, almost blizzard conditions and I'm out there uh, I'm out there in about three feet of snow uh, trying to uh, elevate like I'm picking up uh, the access point which is not light at all uh, but at least I had like National Guard which is our state issued military so they they um, so they were helping me on that and, uh, and then you sandbag it so I was putting it on a trailer so it was pointing down and everything and then I was dealing with uh, but the biggest thing I was dealing with at work was dealing with individuals who um, were over on one of the ITS teams they barked out orders without telling like the EOC commander um, which is a big faux pas so uh, they they did stuff without telling our uh, the EOC the site lead commander, and it screwed everything up and everybody went down and uh, people had to do manual paperwork instead of using the databases that we set up. Uh, and after I fixed it, so and so I took I had to take the blame for that. So that's unfortunately. So I had to take the I took a hundred percent responsibility for something I had zero culpability in, because that's what you do. Sometimes you just got to deal with that and do that. Um, anyways, I'm digressing again. Uh, what I said with the job, the 10%, uh, the 10 things that you could do that take 0% talent, uh, but it'll give you 100% respect, uh, is one, be on time. So if you got to start at six, you're going to be there 545. If it's something important like an interview or a project start, you should be there 30 minutes early. That's on time. Uh, second thing is just having passion. Third, uh, third is having attitude. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to three, four, because I'm, I, I think I'm going to just going to roll out what I can remember. So passion, you want to have to be passionate for anything. Work ethic. That's basically using your discipline. Uh, motivation is this big, heavy guy, like our big, heavy person, because women have it too. So I'm not going to just say guy, but it's this big, heavy lump in you motivation is everyone has motivation but motivation sits there you're like I'm, i want to do this i want to do that and i want to do this most people procrastinate what gets motivation moving is called discipline and discipline is forcing yourself to do something that is a routine so if you get up every morning you do 10 push-ups uh you're gonna hate it for the first month trust me uh, and I'm asking you guys to do this since we're all YouTubers and we spend way too much time at the computer. And most of you guys are half of my age, right? You're in your early 20s. And what I'm asking you to do is make it a routine. Get up. Make this a routine. Get up. Do 10 push-ups. Roll over. Do 10 crunches. Uh, roll over and do a plank for 30 seconds. That's it, you know? Then when you, if you want, get up and do some squats. Uh, to, to alleviate like the, the pressure on your knees and your hips. Uh, that's a good routine to have. That's work ethic and discipline. So that's the discipline to push your motivation. So you do things even when you do not want to. And that's the thing of di discipline. Doing the stuff you have to do, even on the days where you just don't feel like doing anything. Uh, passion, of course, is, is just... You know, a lot of people don't have passion for their job, but you got to find out what you do have passion for. Most of us have passion for playing games and putting them online. So, you know, so we have like a community and or we can make new friends or we can share the love of like a game with somebody that loves the same game we do that we're playing. Um, boy, I forgot all the rest. I really don't know. It's been a, I, I have worked, I have worked about a hundred hours this week, oh, more than a hundred hours this week. So that's my work anyways. So that's work. Uh, second, and we'll go over this real, real quick because I, I don't, I've rehearsed this and I've stated this. I've done this recording about six times now. And sometimes when I've said this, I sound pitiful, pitiful. Um, like I'm looking, I'm looking for pity. Like I'm looking for, you know, people to feel sorry for me. And the other times that I've done it and the other half of times, like the other three times I've done it, I sound really, really bad where it's just like, I, I'm, I'm inhuman where I just don't care where it's like laissez faire. Like I accept my fate or something. 
So I bent at the side of two extremes. So my job's dealing with COVID-19 for last year and this year, which has hindered my channel, my YouTube channel. I haven't done anything on Twitch except karaoke, which I miss because that got closed down. No more Twitch Sings. That got closed down uh, at the end of December 2020. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm, and now I'm pushing off. My health. Uh, here's here's the, the very little good news. The very little good news is that after a year and a half, and I think I've stated this on some videos where it's just like, boy, I was tired this week, and I just slept, and, you know, I slept for 24 hours, or I did this, or I just didn't feel good for a couple of weeks, so that's why I didn't upload videos. Well, after doing tests and thinking it was all these other weird things, um, I mean, they found out that I had rheumatoid arthritis, but they they didn't think that the rheumatoid arthritis was doing all this kind of stuff because they said, you know, it's painful. Uh, and the rheumatoid arthritis is, like on my right hand, I can see that my pointer finger is kind of twisting inwards. Like my nail is... My nail is almost parallel to my middle finger. And my middle finger is kind of bending. But it's not twisting. Like, it's not twisting. But it's bending. So, like, it it's almost going to look like a hook. Not, not that bad. But it looks like, you know, that one's just bending. So, it's not twisting. The nail part isn't twisting. It's just bending. So, like, that top digit that you have... It's kind of like going crooked, like a branch that has too much snow. Anyway, so that's the rheumatoid arthritis. On my left hand, it's a little worse. It is a little worse, uh, which makes it difficult to do WASD and, and, and do that kind of stuff. Uh, my wrists are beginning to hurt. So that's carpal tunnel, but it's also part of the rheumatoid arthritis. Now... Uh, they found that early on. They found that last year, uh, which didn't bother me because they, from what if you look up rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic injury and it does, of course, get worse as you get older. But I'm, I just turned forty six. Uh, January is my birthday month, so happy birthday to me! I did, I did turn forty six years old this month. Uh, so. Where was I going with that? <laughs> I have no idea where I was going with that. So, oh, so rheumatoid arthritis is not supposed to be like this hampering um, this early. Like when I get into my 70s, if I, well, I can't believe I just said that. That's, that's funny. That's funny. If I, when I get into my 70s. Um, so let's, let's go over all this kind of stuff. So the rheumatoid arthritis was something they found first. But all this other stuff I was experiencing, they didn't know. So after a year and a half, I finally got the results back. And there's what I have is a blood disorder. I don't want to get into what blood disorder is, but, you know, you have cells in your blood and stuff. And, um, yeah. So this is, this is rare. This is a rare thing, and it's a weird thing. But what it deals with is, um, what it happens with it is it causes clots. Um, now, these are the reasons that I have these. I usually have debilitating migraines where I, sometimes I just have a bloody nose for whatever reason so, and bloody gums. Um, I mean, I've gone to the dentist and the dentist was like, you don't have gingivitis, so I don't know why your gums bleed. biggest thing about this is it causes clots. Now, Hold me what? close till I get up. Now, belly with the rheumatoid outside. arthritis and this blood disorder, it also gave me a, <laughs> um, a vision issue. And my vision issue is called uvitis. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it, but I think it's U-E-V something like that. Anyways, it's swelling of my eye, and it's caused, it's partially because of the rheumatoid, 
and uh, because that has been known to cause swelling and blood in the eye so basically sometimes my eye just gets beat red like I have um, like I have an affection in it or something um, and my retina did detach uh, a couple of months back uh, which is causing it because there's a lot of blood pressure in there uh, due to the blood disorder now all this the uvitis which now the uvitis is uh, we, I've tried to do antibiotics and that has not worked they tried cortisone shots like directly like kind of near my eye uh in the back of my eye um and and they did something called auto or auto immune immune auto or something something that tells my immune system because uh, this is what's happening is that my immune system believes that i am the disease so my immune system is trying to kill me uh, in different ways. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's going to succeed um, eventually. But what it, what the uvitis is doing, I will get another detached retina. So essentially, uh, because of this auto, autoimmune thing, it's not working. So what's going to probably happen is I'm probably going to lose sight in my right eye uh, and my retina is going to detach and it's just going to be a pain in the ass to keep on attaching my retina. <laughs> that is the weirdest sentence I've ever said in my life. It's going to be a waste of time to keep on attaching my retina into my skull. So either they remove the right eye eventually or and in the meantime I just basically put a a, a piece of gauze over my right eye to kind of keep it in oh boy uh maybe maybe i'll maybe maybe i'll get an eye patch <laughs> and if i ever get to the point where i get how about this if i ever get to the point where i get 5,000 subscribers i'll get a really cool pirate eye patch how about that <laughs> that's funny i'm never gonna hit 5,000 subs i'll tell you that uh because that's consistency. Uh, that's another one of those 10 things. That's consistency. And there's a lot of, and I got to tell you during this pandemic, there's a lot of, we'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Anyway, so I got this uvitis and I have this blood disorder, um, which uh, with the biggest thing on that one uh, is the blood clots. And there's not really anything I they can do about that. So tomorrow I could get a blood clot near in my artery near my heart and it's a fatal heart attack uh tomorrow i could get a blood clot into my brain and that's a stroke um god god willing all i all i wanted all i want to wish for at this point in time in my life if i have if i have whatever whatever happens please i ju i don't want multiple strokes where i slowly lose ability and function i don't want that i don't want that i if i do get that blood clot i'm 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 i want the big one where boom it's pain and and then it's peace uh, that's what i'm hoping for now like i said with everything with covid with everything with covid and such and everybody's afraid of covid and they don't want to catch covid you know covid's a little bitch i'm not afraid of covid i've never been afraid of covid but i'm telling you uh, I don't know if it's in the UK, but I know it's rampant in America. Um, uh, the Northeast America. I don't think it's really spread to like the Western part or anything, but Northeast America for all my, all the people who listen to me here in North, in, in the Northeast, Lyme disease is what caused all of this in me. Lyme disease scares me and it should scare you. When I got Lyme disease, it was 10 years ago. And that's why I, try, so I wanted to start my channel. Because I always wanted to do something with YouTube. And so, almost dying 10 years ago in my 30s, that was where I was like, here's, I, I want to invest in the stock market. I want to buy a house. I want to do, do all these things before I, I kick the bucket. Um, and so, when I got Lyme disease, and I almost died. Because this thing was, I, Lyme disease is, 
first of all, if anybody tells you, let's go hiking, it's it's fun and it's good for our health. If you live in the northeast, if you live in the northeast of uh, North America, North America, uh, maybe the south, maybe maybe it's in North Carolina now too. But if you definitely live in Northeast America, you could sit there and tell them, screw you, it does. Because all it takes is one tick. And that's what it all took for me. I did not even know a tick bit me. I usually have like my pants tucked into my boots. I have long sleeve shirts. I don't know how this tick got me. Um, but it got me. And so uh, and so it got me. And, and, and what happens is, here's Lyme disease. Lyme disease is ticks drink your blood and they're out in the tall grass and they're out in the woods um and they're particularly around deer all the time so if you're around deer all these ticks fly off the deer and go and they love humans so this tick has a parasite inside it a long squiggly parasite that's not even that's barely visible to the human eye but inside that parasite that's feeding on the tick and wants the tick and needs a hum or it needs a host. Like the tick drinks blood and the parasite goes through, uh, um, the what the problabulus, the protrabulus of the tick. It goes to that into the host in order to, in order to uh, populate. So, but that paras parasite has a bacteria in it which is not visible to human, and that bacteria drills into your bone marrow. And there's been people that have seizures. There's people that have been, you know, that have just basically had heart attacks. There's, read up on Lyme disease. It's it's trippy. There's a lot of, some people have paralysis when it comes to that. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's uh, you know, they tell you to watch your dogs too. Because dogs could get affected by it too. So, yeah, Lyme disease. It's like, I can't believe, I've been in combat in the army. Uh, I've had malaria, which almost killed me at 19. But Lyme disease is the thing that just basically, wow, it it was it was in for the long haul. It it had the long con, as it were, where it just sat there and said, "Oh, oop, I didn't kill you, but I'm not gone." And that's exactly what happened. I mean, from what the doctors have said, and I've been to four different specialists. And what the doctors have said is that what they believe is that this Lyme disease caused the rheumatoid arthritis. Now, the rheumatoid arthritis hurt because it eats away at my cartilage, uh, and so did in the Lyme disease. But And then the rheumatoid arthritis took effect. I, I've, I was six foot. Uh, with When I got Lyme disease, I was down to five, nine and a half because of the cartilage. And, and what happened when I first got Lyme disease, it felt like someone took my spine, like someone had like a high pressure thing on the coccyx where your butt is and then um, where your your brain stem is and squeezed like an accordion, squeezed my spine. And it, it was that painful too. Um, and I mean, it's just, I am, in, I am in very good health. I mean, I do still exercise. So I have no fat on my arms. I have no fat on my shoulders or my chest uh, or my legs and especially my butt, which is, yeah, I ain't got much going for me, but I've always had a great ass. <laughs> so I do squats. Um, I do uh, leg lifts and everything like that. I've always done those. Those are my big things. Um, right now I got like 20 pounds around my my belly because, you know, I can't exercise that much and uh um, alcohol, I've been drinking a little bit too much alcohol because it does dull the pain, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm not drinking too much, so don't worry about me. But every once in a while, like, I'll just get blasted because for as as much as it is, uh, as much as it is that it doesn't, <laughs> that hangover doesn't feel good for like four hours the next day, for for the six to eight hours that, uh, that I'm uh, like a little bit buzzed, um, not, not ho totally drunk, but, uh, I'm just in that happy spot. So you stop when you're in that happy spot and you got that little plateau where everything's kind of happy and, and that alcohol is kind of killing any kind of pain. Um, it's good, but see, so that's why I got to stay away from like, 
<laughs> anything else because everyone says that uh, oh heroin oh meth that's isn't that what that does it's like yeah, i gotta stay away from the heavy drug i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding anyway so the lyme disease get me the rheumatoid arthritis and then the rheumatoid arthritis uh, probably developed the blood disorder and then the blood disorder plus the rheumatoid arthritis get me the uvitis which is the eye issue so um so yes so blood clots are going to be a thing um and uvitis i will more than likely lose my eye it is it is over 75 percent chance that i'm going to lose my right eye well, at least the vision in it. Um, and we'll see if it's easier just to kind of pluck my right eye right out. Which is ironic because I had a cat called Houdini that unfortunately um, was beaten by some crude kids when he was outside. Um, and he lost his right eye too. So uh, he lost vision. Well, he didn't lose his right eye. They actually got to save his right eye. But he lost vision in it. So it's like, that's the irony. And it's very ironic that I had a cat and and I have the same have the same affliction. So, anyways, um, see, I don't I don't want it to sound like a pity party or anything like that. Um, listen, I could I could last until I'm 80 years old. Uh, I could die, or I could die this year. It's just the facts. I'm not gonna worry about it. But from a other standpoint, it's like, are you scared? No, no, I'm not really scared. I mean, it kind of sucks, right? There's things I still want to do in life. And God willing, you know, even if there isn't a God, you know, life willing, I'll be able to do them, you know, I'll be able to go, um, I'll be able to go. I mean, I, I was in Antarctica. That was really nice. I've. I've been to Antarctica. I've been to, um, I've been to the, I've been to Dubai. Uh, I do want to go to the Philippines. You know, I want to go see the Philippines. Uh, Palawan is what I want to see. Limestone. They got these limestone caverns and the great, and such blue sea. Uh, I want to go down to the Caribbean. I want to go do that. I want to go have, I want to go have like a, a little thing down the Caribbean. Uh, maybe the Virgin Islands. Maybe you know something like that. Um, just for a little bit. I, I'm not really like the big island person. Um, uh, you know, I like to go swim. I like to go swim with a fish. Uh, I like to go swim with a great white. That'd be nice. I'll go down to South Africa and see the great whites jump up and grab seals. That'd be cool. Um, anyways, I like to do a lot of that stuff. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Um, but the biggest thing is is when I'm when I die I want it to be quick. I don't want it to linger. That's it. That's the only thing I have. We all die. And from a logical standpoint, I with my I have autism. I'm 98% logic and I'm 2% emotion. You know, even Spock had horny moments and emotional moments and every very 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 rare, but I do have those moments. But the most part, uh, it's I'm very logical, and I do realize mortality. We we all have that in common. We are all mortal, and we all are gonna die one day. Um. So I want mine to be quick, quick. I like it to be painless, but even if it's not painless, just quick. So, am I scared? Here's the thing. I'm not. I don't. I don't want to say I'm scared, and I don't want to say I'm not scared. Um, there's certain aspects that I'm scared of, you know, my kids, my kids are still, my kids are adults, which is great, but they're still young and that's kind of a shitty thing to do. Uh, that's a shitty thing to go through where it's like, you sit there and go, um, damn, I, my, my dad died before he was 50. Um, but it's also, it's also to the point where it's also to the point where this isn't genetic so I'm glad about that where my kids, I don't know, my kids might live to be 110 years old. Uh, my whole aspect was because a tick bit me. Really weird. Um, anyway, uh, 
I've made, I've done this uh, postulating planning procedure. That sounds like the 60s Batman, doesn't it? Postulating planning procedure. Holy planning posture, Batman. Um, by the way, the next Batman game I want, I want the I want the next bag, Batman game to be the '60s Batman. Okay, make that happen. I want the '60s Batman with with him doing the Watutsi and having shark repellent. I'm sick. I am sick of gloomy ass 1970s UK punk rock or 1980s The Cure uh, <laughs> flock of seagulls. Batman. I'm sick of that Batman. He's so gloomy and it's so bull crap. Just give me the ha- give me the cl- kitschy goofy Batman. Make that game for once, okay? And then you could go back to making like oh, Batman. Yeah, Batman. But in the meantime, go make go make uh, Adam West Batman. Um so what I've always done every January since god since i can remember even when i was a teenager i would make a year plan i'd make a five-year plan and i make a 10-year plan and then i'd make like a bucket list of stuff i wanted to do before i passed this mortal coil um this month i haven't made the 10-year plan there's nothing on there and i haven't made the five-year plan so from that, and I'm saying so a lot, which is, I don't like because, eh. anyways, I haven't made long-term plans. I've made plans for this year only. That's it. So, so here we go. I just say it. I did it again. Um, from that standpoint, I'm accepting certain things um 2022 would be a gift it'd be a welcome gift so uh but at this point i'm not making five-year plans because i don't know if i'll be here in five years i'm not making 10-year plans because it might it's because that's one of those things where the statistics of me making it that long uh, goes near 50 percent 50 50 actually 10 years i think it goes under 50 because blood clots now this may all change of course in in five years they might find something that will actually work a lot more efficiently when it comes to what i have and blood clots won't be an issue that would be welcome there might be something where they find something where rheumatoid arthritis, they can stop it or, you know, hinder it so it doesn't continue uh, to, you know, destroy your cartilage and to warp, to warp your appendages. And that's what it really does. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis really goes after your fingers and toes. Um, and then it goes after your joints, your shoulder elbows wrists ankles knees i've had an i was shot in my left knee in somalia black hawk down that movie at the end of that movie when they see the 10th when you see the 10th mountain division come in yay that's me um so i i so i've had a number of operations on my my knees Uh, my last operation on my knee was about four months ago and the last operation on my ankle was about eight, eight to nine months ago. Um, so I got a good, I got a good special thing to get my knee operation. But I think, I know my knee ankle, I know my ankle surgery was before all this stuff hit the fan, where everyone was like, "No, you can't come near us." <laughs> I wish they treat Lyme disease like that because really. All right, so uh, enough rambling. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the Bernie memes, by the way. I love this. I've been waiting for I've been waiting for a new meme format. Um, I mean, I still love the Leo DiCaprio uh, smirking kind of thing, and I always I don't think I'll ever get sick of the two women crying, screaming, and pointing, and then you, and then it's the cat at the dinner table, 
I, I don't think I'll ever get tired of that format. Um, by the way, one of the, I made I made two of these memes. I made the I made the one with him inside the Batmobile, the '60s Batmobile, and I made the ones with him with large mittens. I just all I did was just blow up the mittens about uh, fifty times, and I have to tell you, I'm really proud of that because that made me laugh for ten minutes. I didn't think it was going to be that funny. I just says, ah, they, ah, it's a meme for him. I'll throw it. As soon as I blew up his gloves and they were that huge, I just, I could not stop laughing. Um, so, all right. Okay. So, 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 mm, like, so, mm. I really have to stop that. Well, that's one reason I don't think I'm the greatest YouTuber because I hum and haw and say so and too many crutch words when I'm playing a game and trying to talk about it. Really, it, without a microphone in front of my face, I actually am articulate and I don't do mm, ums or any of that. Now, when it comes to my health, that's my health. Uh, when it comes to my work, I already told you about my work. When it comes to this channel in 2021, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm doing. First of all, I'm going to try my best, my best, to play Hitman 3 and to upload it or just to play Hitman 3 uh, using Restream and OBS. So at least I'm live streaming Hitman 3 to Twitch, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook all at once. I'm hoping to do that this weekend. Uh, now... Besides this video, I will I will try, you know, I promise I will have a video every two weeks. Now, if you follow me efficiently, if you really like my channel and you actually hit that subscribe and the bell icon and you look forward to my videos, if you don't hear from me in a month, because I'm going to promise you I am going to post a video every two weeks. Even if it's a video just like this of me ranting or giving an update. I will promise that I'll do it every two weeks. If, if you do not hear from me in a month, if I do not post a video in a month going forward, um, well, something happened. Either... Either something happened where I had a stroke that debilitated me or I had a blood clot and, hey, I didn't suffer. Okay? Keep that in mind. I didn't suffer. So if you don't get a video from me in a month, those are the two things that probably happened. Where I had a stroke and now I'm kind of like a drooling vegetable, which... I really, I've been a good person, in my opinion, all of my life. I've never really taken advantage of every, anybody. I've never really lied. So, please, if there is a God up there, don't, don't let me suffer. Yeah, just make it quick. But I, I do promise, even if it's something like this, or I might start talking about games and doing like a quick like overview of games and what I think about them old games or I might be doing a little bit more pop culture where I do TV shows reviews or movie reviews or just something real quick like that but I will have one of those every two weeks if anything um, I am going to try to finish the games that I have but like I said, and this might be also a psychological thing. Um, I'm sure a therapist would have a field day with it. But with my job and my health, the part is for the, for the YouTube channel, it's the low priority at this point. And I know that really hurts, especially when it comes to viewing. And I'm sorry I don't view you guys as much as I want to. I know... I, I know, I hear some of you guys complaining about, like, your watch time. You, I watch your videos in full. So, if your watch time's going down, I'm sorry, that's me. Because I do watch your videos in full. Even if people don't watch my videos in full, and I know they, I know 
most people do not because my average watch time is like five minutes, which hurts. That hurts, man. And that's another reason why I'm not really where, unfortunately, the YouTube channel is not like the highest priority. I, I'm not getting like the view time that I will ever get to have any kind of significance in the YouTube community. Uh, I'll never be monetized. Well, I never wanted to be monetized anyways, because once you get monetized, they have you by the short and curlies. You can't say fuck, 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 cunt, cunt, bitch. <laughs> I, ra- I want to say that. I want to I want to post a video of someone saying dickhead, Lavivia Dirtly. Now, they may claim that. They might claim this video because I have one of their skits. One of their, um, I took a portion of a super cut from them. And they might claim this video. Guess what? That's another reason why I never wanted to get monetized. Because I know I know people, I know there's organizations that, that I like to do these memes for that like to just claim videos all the time. Uh, and I'd rather just not be bothered. You want to claim my video and make money off of it? Good luck. I can't make money off of it. Good luck you making money. However... You know, I do want to share some of the games that I want. I want to finish that. I want to finish the Outer Worlds. I want, I want to, here's what I want. I want to finish the Outer Worlds. And it would feel so good that, say, I don't make it past five years. What would be so awesome is like six years from now, somebody, some kid, some 12 year old, is, watch, is looking over YouTube for Outer Worlds playlists. And he finds mine, and he thinks it's and he thinks it's the best ever, and he emulates his gameplay off of what I did, uh, or he thinks my channel is funny or something. And that's why we all do it, right? We want somebody to watch like our playlist of a game and say, "That's what I you taught me something new," or, "Boy, that's how I wanted to play it." And you know, that's what we do. Yeah, we want that validation from other guys that uh, other guys and girls that play games. So that's what I like on my things, uh, my my channel. And yeah, I wanna, I want, I want people down the road to to do that. I want them to find my channel. You know, my um, my out of the park baseball, which you know doesn't get a lot of views because it's very kitschy. I want, uh, but I want to finish that up. I want to finish that 1994 thing where I banned the steroid players, and I want somebody. Um, who loves baseball, who found their love of baseball. And they're going through YouTube videos and they find mine and they go, oh my God, what a great concept of banning uh, banning steroid users and, and doing an expansion in, uh, you know, doing an expansion league. <clears throat> we also ban those cheaters. So that's what I like to do. So as for the channel, the big thing right now is Hitman 3. I'm going to try to get Hitman 3 out, whether it's by live stream, where I, I just live stream for three days straight and I play the game in full. And I have these live streams of uh, two hours. I don't So I don't care. Uh, and then, you know, you know, I like to play Space Crew and finish Outer Worlds. Those are the those are the things I want. And uh, I'd like to throw Stardew Valley in there again. You know, I'd like to have a live stream of Stardew Valley on Twitch, uh, YouTube, and Facebook on a Sunday morning. Uh, if I'm not working, I'd love to have that. It'd be really nice just to spend two hours playing some Stardew Valley while people watch me do it and give advice and uh, tell some jokes. And uh, that'd be great. Oh, I have a joke for you. Here's a joke. And I'll leave on a joke before we get out of here. Okay? Here's the joke. It's like, um, how do you know if the pepper <laughs> if the pepper you know is a nosy one? Well, it's all up in your business. Ha ha ha. That's a dad joke. Anyways, um, we got the Bernie memes. The Ber- Bernie memes are mwah, uh, A plus special. They are very French. Oh. Uh, but now we are going to play the Hitman 3 trailer, and you can see exactly what game and why I love the game Hitman 3 so much. And the reason I like the to, I like the the game Hitman 3 so much is not it's not the most difficult game in the world. I don't think so. 
Um, and it's not the most, you know, and they haven't really rocked the boat. I think I pissed off some people where uh, somebody said, oh, this is going to be the greatest game ever. And I said, well, I don't think so. I mean, it's going to be a very good game and the graphics are going to be much better. But I don't, I don't think that Hitman 3 is going to change the formula. It has a great formula and it should stick with it. I don't think it's going to turn everything on its head. Uh, where it's going to say it, it's going to do different premises. And from what I saw from the trailer, what I've seen from the trailer uh, and the gameplay, tra I've seen the the other the first trailer and then the gameplay trailer. What I've seen from those is that they basically just tweaked a little bit of what they had, what worked in Hitman Two, and they added some things and they took out like a couple. It may be two things that were uh, that people complained about. That's it. That's not a great game, but it's a very good one, and it's a it's a non-defeating game. It's not like The Last of Us Two that looked at The Last of Us and said, "Oh, all that stuff that that everybody loved and won awards, great praise." Nah, we're gonna dump that and make it all mean nothing. And that's what they did. But they still won like awards, even. But they won the awards where people were just like. Yeah, you won the awards, but just like Joe Biden, you, you did. You basically uh, you had help, uh, so you didn't, and you really didn't deserve it. Uh, you know, the ghost, uh, the uh, ghost of uh, Tirashima deserved Game of the Year because that was just fantastic when it came to uh, uh, the fighting mechanics on it. So that that was wonderful. Um, now. Hitman 3 will we'll do that trailer, and I just love it. It's going to Dubai. Um, they're doing this thing where it's they're showing like these clouds in the sky, but every time... Now, it may be because I always go to Dubai uh, in February. Um, I haven't for the last two years, of course, because of COVID. Uh, now, because they put COVID stuff into uh, place last year like i think they did it december of 2019 actually the uae they sat there because they knew stuff was coming from china and so they shut down quick uae so i don't i think by february i had my tickets but i returned them uh because they were giving they were giving a bunch of returns around that time they were like well i don't think we're going to be traveling soon and that's that's what happened now, um, but I usually go through Dubai in February. Uh, I actually, I actually go to A A Abu Dhabi, which is the capital of the Emirates. But you know, I spend time. I, 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 if it, if it's cheaper to fly into Dubai, which it usually is, rather than Abu Dhabi, I do that. So I go into Dubai and then I drive down to Abu Dhabi. I like spending time in the capital. It, it's still a great place down there. It's got a nice bike path right near the ocean. However, yeah, and, and it's, but it's just not crowded and uh, full of construction like uh, Dubai. And like I said, I've never seen it cloudy. So I don't, I don't know why in the trailer in Hitman 3, they have the, the clouds, but maybe I, it seems like they had a picture of Dubai with the clouds in the sky. So maybe there is a, a time where I know the UAE seeds their clouds to get rain. But from a natural standpoint, I've never seen like heavy cloud cover in Dubai, uh, even with the uh, even with the world's tallest building, which is not, um, which is a great do it once. But that the la you know the first time I ever went to Dubai, that was the lamest part of the trip was going up on that high. I waited forever because it's you know it's one of those things that people want to go to. They want to go to the tallest building in the world, so I would wait there. I waited at the tallest building. We went up. I didn't even get like the, the nice little tummy thing where your your stomach goes up and down because you're going up in the high elevation. They do the something in the elevator <laughs> where it prevents it. So it's like state of the art where you don't get dizzy going up that elevation really quick. And, and so you can't even get that rush. And then you get up there and there's the, uh, the you got a couple of cafes. And then of course you got the kitschy. Uh, you got the kitschy stuff, like uh, you got the t-shirts and the, the little uh, 
uh, the little statue. I have one of those. I got the statue of the hotel, the only six six star hotel in the world, the one that looks like a sailboat that's out on that handmade uh, Al Jahiri uh, thing. And then this one is the Al Khalifa, which is the name of the of the sheik that is all that is the leader of uh, the UAE who resides in Abu Dhabi. I think it's the Al Khalifa. That's the world's tallest building. Uh, now the th good, great thing about the world's tallest building is it's near it's it's right near uh, the one of the, the I think it's the largest mall in the world. It's got an ice rink in it and it's got a huge it's got like a huge aquarium in it with sharks and everything. It's fantastic. I love the aquarium. Uh, and then it's got this nice and that's got this well nice. It's got this beautiful fountain type uh, pool right in front of the world's tallest building there and in front of the mall. And it it synchronizes with different songs. And usually they're Asian songs, which I think was very, I think it was very sweet. I, when I went there, I think it was a, uh, a song from uh, a Hong Kong thing. So anyways, enjoy the rest of the Hitman 3 trailer. I will be playing this. It looks fantastic. The graphics look fantastic. And I, and I, and I think it's just going to improve on uh, what we did in Hitman 2, right? And then what I'll do is, uh, I did play Hitman 2, uh, but I play, I played it offline. I didn't record that. This is before I think I had my my channel when I played Hitman 2. And I have all the Hitman games, by the way. Like, all the way down to Hitman 1, Agent 47, which was real clunky. Uh, which is real clunky, and it really doesn't work well on Windows 10 machines a lot. But yeah, I want to see that. And I also want to see this end of the story here. Uh, will, will, uh, will she be the one to backstab him? Will, will, uh, Mr. Gray be the villain? Uh, which they probably will. Uh, or will the, uh, what is it? Conscript? The conscript? I think that's his name. Will the conscript, uh, be the man who comes back? We'll have to see. But thanks for joining me. Now get off my interlone.